To thee we come, O Lord our God. that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. For your penance for the next three nights, Besides having your evening prayers, to take one of the readings as prescribed by the church on this low Sunday, to reread and to reflect upon the message. And now I ask that you recite with me the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his power given unto me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our prayer the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I waited, waited for the Lord, who bent down and heard my cry, and drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp, set my feet upon rock, and steadied my steps. Alleluia. And I put a new song in my mouth that came from our God. Many shall look on and all, and many shall trust in the Lord. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now, and ever shall be, for all that end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, 
Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, our Father, you have raised Christ, your Son, who conquered death and opened for us the way to eternal life. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives by the risen Christ, who is among us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Cheryl, will you please proclaim the word? first reading is a reading from the Act of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possession was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the Apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them. Bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Amen. The gradual. Too costly in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Alleluia. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John the Apostle. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the ones who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I praise you, Lord, for you raised me up and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You kept me from going down to the pit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel. According to St. John, Glory to you, Lord. on 
the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God in His commandments. These words are taken from today's second reading from the first letter of John the Beloved. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters, witnesses to the risen Lord. Following the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus, we read that the apostles hid themselves out of fear. They locked the doors and they barred the windows. I am sure that they heard every sound, awaiting for that one knock that would bring about their own arrest and even suffer crucifixion as their Lord. For whatever reason, Thomas was not present. Peace be with you, was how Jesus greeted them. Peace. His greeting was intended, I believe, to first calm their fears. And later, it was intended to give them the courage and the confidence in place of the terror that they must have felt. The words were to be for them calming words and words that would transform them from extreme fear into great rejoicing. We have seen the Lord, they said to Thomas. Again, Jesus said to those that were gathered, Peace be with you. The appearances of Jesus was intended to let all those who witnessed his resurrection that indeed he was with them. Jesus would again meet them one week later with Thomas being present with the same message, peace be with you. At this Easter time, I believe within my heart that the Lord comes to those who turn to Him in prayer, seeking strength and patience through His presence during difficult times. As Christ comes among us, He comes not only with a message of peace, but also gives unto His disciples a mission. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. I believe that He has called all of us to go forth as his disciples, to bring forth his message of peace and love, but also service in the need for others. We are reminded of the parable of judgment found in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus says, as often as you have done it to the least of the brethren, you have done it to me. Maybe this is the oneness that Jesus prayed at the Last Supper for all of us to have. We learn from catechetical instruction that there exists in Christianity a spiritual marriage, a bond between Christ as the bridegroom and his church, which Paul describes as his bride. We also learn that all of us, as members of his church, are of his body. We find this concept in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where we read, By one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and that we are all meant to drink of the one Spirit. 
The truth is that Christ needs us, my brothers and sisters, and is dependent upon us. For we are called as members of his body to be his hands, his feet, his voice, and his heart. We in turn need to see Christ as our bread of life, as our resurrection and life, as the Good Shepherd. For we, as calling upon him in prayer, he grants unto all spiritual strength, sustenance, and guidance. Jesus has given each and every single one of us a message to go forth and share this message of hope, compassion, mercy, love, and peace. To carry out this mission, he gave his church not only the wisdom, but the power of the Holy Spirit. Did he not breathe on his disciples that evening and say, receive the Holy Spirit? All of us who are baptized into the church, there is a part of the ritual where the celebrant breathed upon the child or adult to be baptized with the words, receive the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, in this season of Easter, Jesus offers us peace in times of personal trial, personal troubles, chaos and confusion. This peace helps to bring him closer to us and helps us to be witnesses to others. Peace is a most powerful word, and it recalls how our Lord comes to us at this Easter season. Amid all the problems that we have in our world today, His peace is not found outside of ourselves or in our society but rather begins within ourselves. It is in the quietness of our own upper room where we shut off the confusion and chaos of the physical world and is where we begin to perceive the peace that Jesus brings to us. Blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe when we truly come to believe, like Thomas came to believe, that the Lord is alive in our lives, we begin to understand this peace that brings about solace, strength, confidence, and assurance. This statement of faith is confirmed in the words of the first letter of Peter. Chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And although you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unalterable and exalted joy as the outcome of your faith, you obtain the very salvation of your souls. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I 
believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, I will present my thank offering to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Alleluia. Please be seated. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, whose memory we honor here on earth, intercede for us in heaven through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, accept the offerings of your rejoicing church, which you have enlivened this day, and grant us the gift of perpetual gladness for you have given us cause for great joy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. (laughs) 
in like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and a chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. <sighs> to these souls, Lord, and all who rest on Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numerous in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the mind in example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. from sin and secure from all disturbance. 
through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. For forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May the, this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it last unite us entirely with you and with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for those who will not be receiving the Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven. And we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not
we have received unto our lips. May we receive mentally. And may this temple give us Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, you belong the keys of life and death by the will of the Father. Preserve us through these holy mysteries that our redemption may be assured and our doubts relieved. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Gold, the sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. Became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.
will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now, and shall be before God. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.